what I'm going to make for you today. They're big, big snails, or escargot, which is basically edible snails. Put some water in there around a cup and a half. Ginger, lemongrass, and chili. Pour that all in. Now that's smelling great already. I'm also going to add in some lemon leaf. It looks like my water's boiling. All you need to do, throw these in there and cook them for just five minutes with a lid on. Lid on for five minutes. That's for my dipping sauce. More ginger here, julienne up, put into my mortar. Some more lemongrass and some finely sliced lemon leaf and a bit more chili. Pound that up again, a bit finer than last time. I'm going to put that into my fish sauce. Put the toothpick in, twist the shell, and out she should come. Dip that into your sauce with your ginger, lemongrass, and lemon leaf, and chili. Mm. That tastes fantastic. Hello there and welcome to this edition of Talk Vietnam. You've just seen a short extract from Luc Nguyen's Vietnam. It's a culinary series on Vietnamese cuisine uh, and it's on the Australian network SBS. Uh, now Luc is uh, the acclaimed owner and also chef at a Sydney restaurant called the Red Lantern. He has been returning to Vietnam uh, almost uh, in the past few years in order uh, to basically travel throughout the country, embark on culinary adventures uh, throughout the southern and more recently also the northern regions of Vietnam. And along the way, he has prepared dishes in locations that represent the real Vietnam in all of its chaotic vibrancy. So we're lucky enough today to have him with us. Uh, and hello. Hi, thanks, thanks Thank for having me. Thank you yeah. very much for joining us here today, Pleasure. Luke. Thank you. Um, can you tell us a little bit about how you started uh, this series with uh, SBS, Australian Network. Sure. Um, I've had Red Lantern now for uh, almost nine, ten years. And um, uh, traveling to Vietnam was just the next step after that, was to, to go through Vietnam and, and look at all the regional dishes from um, south to north and learn more about the cuisine. So during that time of researching, I um, <coughs> wrote a course, writing a cookbook as well, which is called The Songs of Sapa and it's about um, travel stories, culinary journey through the country and learning of street food vendors and home cooks and going to certain restaurants and um, when you're when you're traveling in Vietnam as a, as a male and you're so passionate and loving about the food you attract a lot of attention from the locals mm -hmm. and um, the incredible stories that I um, attained from that and the colors and the vibrancy of it all um, which I put into the book, it just made sense to, I wanted to make a, a create um, a show and a cooking series from these stories. Right. Yeah. Awesome. Tell us a little bit about how it started out. I mean, it has grown to be such a successful um, series on SBS and also amongst the Australian public. So tell us a little bit about the success of the show so far. Well, the show was, um, I wanted to be about, of course, the food and the cooking, but I wanted more than that. I wanted to create a show that showed Vietnam's um, beautiful landscape, mm -hmm. um, Vietnam's amazing culture, and its loving, hospitable people. And to capture all that, I had to make it um, as authentic as possible. And to do that in Vietnam, food for me in Vietnam, the exciting part of it is street food. Mm -hmm. So all of the cooking is on the street, in the markets, um, all outdoors, and when um, the Australian viewers saw this, they were just like, wow, this is just like being there, I want to go, it's so exciting, it's not just a cooking show, but everything in one show. Um, and uh, Australians love that, you know, and now that um, the show is all over the, the world now, and people are coming to Vietnam, it's just made this, this show just incredibly fantastic to do. Now the series on the SBS network, uh, we mentioned that its name is Luke Wins Vietnam. Yes. Uh, but earlier, uh, I heard that it was named just Luke's Vietnam. So, what <laughs> happened? What happened? Uh, why did you well, uh, decide to change it? When SBS um, saw my title of Luke Wins Vietnam, they said, "Oh, can we just 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 call it Luke's Vietnam?" And I said, well, why? They said, because wings, too hard to pronounce. <laughs> and I said, exactly my point. I want everybody around the world to be able to pronounce wing because <laughs> my surname and is the third um, largest 
or the third most popular surname in Australia. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I think we need to kind of show people how to pronounce it properly. And, uh, the third popular Yes, popular. yeah, you know, there's Smith and there's Chan and there's um, um, Wing. Oh, wow. Yeah, so um, now in, in Australia and hopefully the rest of the world pretty mm. soon, people and everyone will be able to pronounce Wing <laughs> instead of um, Nguyen or Nguyen. Yeah. yeah. Um, I'm going to cut this block of tofu here. This has been pressed for 15 minutes, nice and silky, a little bit firm. Cut this into four cubes of around five centimeters, maybe two centimeters high, and I'm going to slice them across, just so it's easier to work with. Now, put a crisscross in the middle from corner to corner. I'm going to mix a little lemongrass in there into a bowl, sliced up chili, and a bit of salt, around a teaspoon of salt. And you mix it all up, stuff it in there. Be very delicate with your hands because it is silken tofu. You don't want to break it. Gently put the tofu into the wok. Now don't cook this for too long, just around two minutes. Just slowly check it. Yep, almost there. That is so fantastic. It's perfect. And there's my crisp silken tofu fried with lemongrass and chili. The whole jian sa Um, during this first season from Fukuok Island up to Hoi An, yes. is that right? Um, what were some of the unforgettable memories? I mean, obviously you traveled so much. Well, I guess um, the main um, highlight for me was being able to spend so much time with my family mm -hmm. who um, I haven't been able to spend a lot of time with and, and learn all their um, secret family recipes. You know, like um, I have a grandmother in um, District 1, I have some cousins and um, siblings up in Phan Thiet. Mm -hmm. um, and then when I w went up to Quyn Yung, I met this, um, this wonderful lady who um, has a school for dis disabled children, mm. um, teaching them um, uh, art, embroidery. And I went there and I thought, well, I'm so fortunate in Australia, how can I um, do something for these kids? And the only thing that I know is cooking. Mm. So I taught these, um, these, young, um, these young adults um, how to cook and how to prep certain things. And um, you know, a lot of them have hearing impairments and mm. sight impairing, so we couldn't really um, talk as such. Um, but the beautiful thing was we were able to communicate through the, um, the magic the food. Of, of food. Yes. And for me that was such a spe special moment. And um, the whole crew were there who were mostly Australian. They could not speak Engl uh, Vietnamese and the Vietnamese mm. couldn't speak English. So there was no communicating in, in, um, you know, in voice tone. But we all sat around the table and um, we spoke through the language of food, which was food, wonderful. Food, a global language. Food is a global language, yeah. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Um, in an interview, uh, we have kind of a short uh, quote from you here, an interview on Tuiche online in yeah. March 2009. You said that the biggest goal in your life is to prove to the world that Vietnamese cuisine is definitely the best. Yes, I'm <laughs> almost there, I think. <laughs> you know, uh, Vietnamese food, I mean, Vietnam, we were, um, you know, we've had Chi a thousand years of Chinese um, rule. We've been colonized by the French for almost a hundred years. We're surrounded by such fantastic um, culinary countries, like Thailand, Laos, Cambodia. We've had Indian influence, we've had Japanese influence. Mm -hmm. So, um, and Vietnam has created this cuisine that's just so intricate and so, um, so delicate and evolved mm -hmm. um, that people don't realize, you know. And, and um, in Australia, Vietnamese cuisine is slowly getting really, really up there in, in all the best foods in the world. And um, Vietnamese food, um, telling people that it's, and showing people that it's fresh. Mm -hmm. A lot of um, herbs and vegetables that exactly. are used. Yeah, Everything is rolled in lots of mm -hmm. beautiful green colors. And a lot of things we eat is medicinal, so it's good for you. Yeah, And the flavors are so so subtle and so elegant and well balanced and um, and people um, around the world are really getting to to realize that Vietnamese food is delicious and very good for you as well. Right and yeah. thanks to such programs as yours it's uh, becoming yeah. more of a reality. Yes and Vietnamese food is just not a, a, a quick cheap meal you know it's we use fantastic fresh produce mm -hmm. the best 
produce that we can get, you know, think of your mother and your grandmother going to the markets exactly. about finding the, the perfect vegetable or the perfect um, cut of meat mm -hmm. or um, the perfect bunch of, of, um, of herbs for a dish. So right. it's, it's such a wonderful cuisine. Now we talked about your uh, series, um, your season one in the South. Now going to your season two, which uh, aired uh, in early December, just aired? Yes, just aired in uh, Australia, yeah. Okay, awesome. Um, that was from Hue, Hue? upward to All the way up. Sapa, to Sapa, which is uh, in the north, um, northern uh, most tip point. Uh, tell us about this trip. What were some of the uh, memories that stick to mind? Um, it was a lot different for me personally mm. because um, I don't have any family members up there at all. So um, it was like such a learning experience and um, discovery for me. Um, and it was quite unique and I think the, the most amazing parts of, of traveling to places like um, Mai Jiao, Sapa and Bakar is like you've got all these you know the, the wonderful minority groups there, the ethnic minority mm -hmm. groups and they live on the land, they live off the land so their ways of cooking was so um, so simple, um, primitive so fantastic, you know. Um, I would say, what's your most um, uh, prized dish in the family? And we would, he'll go, come on. So we'll, we'll, we'll chop down some bamboo from the, the yard. Um, we'll go catch our fish from the local pond. Mm -hmm. um, we'll grab some lemongrass from the garden, some ginger and turmeric, and we'll grind it up, um, pluck a little coconut from the tree, we'll marinate it, stuff it into the bamboo, and just put it on the fire. Now, for me, um, that way of cooking is, is so beautiful. You know, everything and, from the garden. And everything is from five or ten meters away. Mm -hmm. um, and these, these villages don't have much, but they live off their land, you know. And, but the thing is, they don't need much at all. Mm -hmm. um, where, where I was brought up in Australia, we have so much, <laughs> but we still, have, we still find things to complain about. But these people um, live a simple, beautiful life, and they're so happy. And when they smile, it's such a, um, a wonderful, real, happy, genuine, you know, what happiness. Per, uh, which yeah. particular location was that? Uh, Mai Jiao was one, Mai Jiao, and mm -hmm. up in the villages of Sapa as well, which yes. is very special. So, um, and the landscape there is it's gorgeous, gorgeous right? absolutely gorgeous. And, you know, for me to learn, learn more about the ethnic minority cultures, um, wonderful, mm -hmm. very, very special. Compared to uh, the uh, cuisine of the South, how would you say it's uh, different or similar? I think it's quite different. I think the South, um, like they have a sweeter tooth, um, so a lot of the dishes um, have a bit more sugar, mm. as uh, as in in, um, and of course where the South South is situated next to Cambodia and you know there's kind of a lot of um, more um, powerful flavors, I should say, or ingredients. Whereas up north. The, the dishes are a bit softer in flavor, subtle, but not bland, right? It's mm -hmm. subtle, but it's elegant. It's so soft, and um, you kind of, um, your palate changes. It's like drinking um, different red wines, mm. you know? Um, if you drink a, a wine from Australia, it's big and it's bold. Right. It's got, wow, so much on the palate. That's like Saigon, uh, or, or sorry, Southern cuisine. Mm -hmm. And then you go up north, it's like drinking a a light um, Beaujolais from France, right. you know, it's you're very, gonna, subtle. very subtle and you're, you're tasting the different soft flavours um, mm. and that, that's the difference I think, it's, um, uh, but I love both, both cuisines and central cuisine is fantastic as well. In your series uh, you sort of demystified a vast number of Vietnamese herbs, uh, can you talk a little bit about Vietnamese herbs, I mean uh, there are so many types and uh, it seems like a fascinating subject. Yes, absolutely, and um, I think Vietnamese herbs is the essential um, ingredients that um, that make Vietnamese cuisine what it is. You know, um, each dish has a different herb that goes with it. You know, and and um, and I do a lot of classes in Australia in Sydney, showing um, Australians what these different herbs are. Mm -hmm. uh, my favourites being um, ngò um, you know, ngò gai, mm. um, one that um, is quite. Um, of an acquired taste is um, yap ga, you know, the fish yes, mints. Yeah. So all these dishes and rau dung and, and so coming to, to Vietnam and seeing all the vast variety of herbs, I'm, I'm in heaven, you know, there's so yeah. many and we don't have that, um, that luxury of having all these herbs in Australia. So for me, discovering the different flavours and what 
what for these herbs go with what dishes mm -hmm. and also learning about its medicinal qualities mm -hmm. um, and my favorite mints would have to be um, rau tito and rau gue yes. and yeah, mm. lovely. Um, gung, rau gung nuk and right. yeah, all these are fantastic. They give a very different taste to each dish. Yes, yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's the essential ingredients, I think, for, mm -hmm. for Vietnamese cuisine. Yeah. You also mentioned in this interview that we uh, said earlier that Vietnam is something that is very close. It's always in your heart. Yes. Um, for you, being able to come back to your country of heritage and doing such a program, what, is, what does it mean for you? Um, for me, it's actually quite an emotional experience. Um, I grew most of my life, I grew up in, in Sydney, Australia, mm -hmm. in a suburb called Cabramatta, which is um, <laughs> like little Vietnam. You know, it's, it's got all the restaurants there, all the produce stores, um, the similar foods. So coming to, to Vietnam for the first time when I was like 19, um, I had this immediate connection with the country. You know, I felt like, wow, you know, I have never lived here. I wasn't born here, but I feel like this is kind of where I belong. And so everything was familiar to me. And um, for me to, to spend more time here and learn more about the food um, and more about my culture as well is, um, is something I really want to continue doing. Yeah. And talking about your roots in Vietnam, we'll take a look at a short clip. Uh, we'll take a look at uh, how Luke has come back to the country this time. Every time he comes back, he visits his uh, grandma's home here in uh, District 1 in Ho Chi Minh City. So we'll take a look at, at some footages of that visit. Because I was not born here, um, growing up in Australia, I miss having that connection of having um, the extended family. But I never had that love of um, grandparents or, or great-grandparents. Great so coming here and spending time with her, it's a different kind of love. It stirs different types of emotion. So um, it's something, when I come back, it's something I never had as a child. So when I come here, I feel like a child again. <laughs> I love coming back to my, my parents and my grandmother's area here because it shows me the real Vietnam. In the center of Vietnam, there's, it's, it's modern, it's contemporary, it's new. But coming here and looking at how people live in this neighborhood, in this community, it just evokes so much emotion because it's, it's where my family um, was brought up. So I just, I just adore coming here every time I return to Vietnam. And it feels like, it feels like home. that kind of cooking um, is the most exciting way of cooking for me. And I really love when I come back to Vietnam and see that it's like, wow, you know, it's on the street. It's, um, as soon as I walk out of the door, there's food. There's almost 20 dishes there. One person. And that for me is like, wow, you know. Um, in where I come from in Australia, where the way I was trained and brought up in kitchens, there's seven people on a table and professional benches, but we don't need that. We don't need it here. It's all done on the street in a small lane. It's all hand cut, marinated, done. One person, and it's the most beautiful food you can ever eat. And so watching that, and then when she's serving it, you sit down, have a big plate, and it's 15,000 dong, you know, not even one dollar. And that is the magic of, of Vietnam for me. So you just mentioned earlier that you came back to Vietnam the first time when you were 19 years yep. old. Uh, what you, drew you back in the first place? Yes, so um, what happened was when I was um, 10 years old, 
I always knew that I wanted to open a restaurant. It was always in me. I always knew that it, was, it might be in my blood, you know, the restaurant industry, the food industry. Um, so growing up and um, reaching, finishing school when I was 18, I realized that if you want to open a business, you need to be pretty much dedicated to it full time. Mm -hmm. It's like marrying a business. So for me, I needed to, to travel, um, get that out of my system, and then dedicate myself to what I really want to do. Um, and one of those destinations um, had to be Vietnam because I wanted to open a Vietnamese restaurant and I can't do that without coming to Vietnam. Okay. And meeting my family for the first time was such an emotional experience um, and traveling to different parts to get different knowledges about the regional cuisine. Mm -hmm. And that was my main um, motivation to come back here. Oh, yeah. um, and I spent so much time here because I loved it so much. Mm -hmm. And I got all these ideas and motivations and, and went back to Australia and opened Red Lantern. Mm -hmm. and, um, and that was a, a very special day for me. Yeah, it, yeah. It, must, it must have been a very, uh, uh, even a big shocker, the first, the first visit. Uh, what was it like? What impressed you the most about the country? What impressed me the most about Vietnam was its energy. Mm -hmm. You know, it had, everyone's so, um, everything's happening on the street. It never stops, you know, and, and um, I think the most the amazing thing that um, got me was everyday life is, about, is surrounded by food. You know, you arrive and someone says, what would you like to eat? Have you eaten yet? You know, and, uh, and then so you sit down and eat and while you're eating your breakfast, what are we going to eat for lunch? You know? <laughs> and then when we eat it for lunch, what are we going to eat for dinner? But that's, I was asking these questions as well, you know, and, and everything's surrounded by food and um, I, just, I just adore how um, every Vietnamese person is so passionate about food and they know their food and uh, as soon as you talk about food, it's, you know, to a, to a complete stranger, you talk about food and then you're invited into their homes and you exactly. become family and friends and for me that, that, that whole um, food culture is something that we don't really experience in Australia mm -hmm. and that food culture is what I'm connected to. <laughs> so coming to Vietnam is like, wow, have I arrived home, have I? You know? um, so, so yeah, that's what I loved about Vietnam and the landscape and the whole way of um, making things from scratch. Mm. How, how, they, how we make rice paper from grinding and soaking the rice mm. and steaming it. You know, how um, we make bun, you know, vermicelli noodles. It's, uh, no one does that in Australia. You know, mm. it's all bought and purchased from the supermarket. and right. um, packaged and frozen. Yeah, and then s driving down through the rice paddies and, and seeing the, how, how much hard work goes into cultivating rice and mm -hmm. how much time and energy. Um, and it, it makes you appreciate what you have. So um, it, it makes you not want to waste food, you know, because you look at how much work goes into it. How about in the near future, in terms of what you would envision, uh, basically, your, if I may ask your life partner to be like, um, would she have to be a good cook as well? Absolutely, and she is, luckily. <laughs> oh, great. Um, my partner, Susanna, is um, Australian. She grew mm -hmm. up in a very um, small country town and um, um, I remember meeting her for the first time and introducing her to um, Ganjua, mm. right? Ganjua Ga. Yes. And so for her, I remember her reaction was, oh, and Ganjua Ga is, um, if people don't know out there, is the tamarind broth with okra and mm. elephant's ear stem and um, pineapple and very fish uh, or prawns. And so that, that dish itself is, I always introduce people to that dish for the first time because it's, it's Vietnamese, you know, it's got the balance of flavor, the, 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 um, the, the broth has um, tamarind, so it's a bit sour. Mm -hmm. It's got the pineapple, it's a bit sweet. It's got fish sauce, it's a bit salty. Exactly. Um, it's clean um, and it's very textural and colorful. She fell in love with she it. She fell in love. And so now that, that actual dish is a, a regular placement in um, the, um, their Christmas family dinner. Oh, it's wow. Gangchou. Yeah, it's great. Gangchou and Christmas dinner. Yeah. That's awesome. Um, so. Luckily, so cooking is very a big part of um, a big part of your uh, your future plans, absolutely. your future family. In Australia, Luke Nguyen is known as the chef and owner of the award-winning Vietnamese restaurant The Red Lantern in Sydney. He is also the author of the best-selling books Secrets of Red Lantern and The Songs of Sabah. In 2009, Luke Nguyen and his partner Susan Laboyd founded the Little Lantern Foundation in Hoi An, which gives disadvantaged youths an opportunity to participate in a hospitality training program in Little Lantern's operating hotel, restaurant and bar. 
As the host of Look Nguyen's Vietnam on Australian SBS television network, Look travels Vietnam, exploring the cultures and culinary delights of the country from Ho Chi Minh City in the south to the northern city of Sha Ba. So now in terms of your work, what do you find more challenging, uh, being a chef or being a TV host? Definitely a TV host. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. um, because uh, I've just completed the second series, so you know, I'm fairly new to the industry. Um, and it's, um, it's my own production company as well, so it's a whole new industry for me. So learning how to organize that, and, and, mm -hmm. um, but in terms of cooking on the street through Vietnam, it's so much fun, but extremely challenging. Mm. Yeah, so, um, I mean, that, that pitch in particular is right in the center of Bentan Markets in Ho Chi Minh right. City. And um, you're surrounded by people. Um, there's so much happening and all the locals are telling you what you're doing wrong and how you do it. And it's, <laughs> it's exciting, but it's like, oh my God, it's so overwhelming. So um, for me, it's, um, it's, it's such a, um, a huge challenge. Mm -hmm. um, and I look forward to each challenge every time. It seems that your family has been a big part in nurturing your love for cuisine. Uh, was it something that ran in, in the family or uh, how did you start to get into cooking in the first place? Yeah, well, my, uh, my mother and father um, had a Vietnamese restaurant oh. when we were very young. So they've, we've always been surrounded with food, good food and the, the restaurant industry. So um, as soon as I could walk, I was working. You know, and uh, before school we would, would work in the restaurant, after school we would work in the restaurant. Um, it was work, a lot of work, um, but luckily I enjoyed working in this field. So um, when I finished school it just made sense for me to, to keep um, going along that career and, um, mm -hmm. and follow my passion. And that's what it is. Okay. And I feel so fortunate that I'm able to do that. In terms of being a chef, yep. uh, what do you find most interesting about being a famous chef and uh, what, what are some of the challenging parts as well? I think the most interesting thing about being a chef is you never stop learning. You know, you, I, I can never say, yep, I know everything about Vietnamese cuisine. That ne would never happen for me. Mm -hmm. So for me, it's so um, motivating because everywhere I travel, um, I learn something new. Mm -hmm. And be it in a, in a busy, bustling city um, like Ho Chi Minh or Hanoi, I'm learning something all the time. But going to the small villages as well, you're learning so much, you know, in, um, old cooking techniques and cooking methods. So being a chef for me is great because I don't stop learning. Mm -hmm. And the most challenging thing is um, <coughs> it's hard work. Running a restaurant and being a chef, it's you're on your feet for 14, 15 hour days. Um, when you're working, people are out playing. Mm -hmm. um, your weekends are working, you know, your busy periods are working. So that's exactly. the biggest challenge for anyone in the industry. So mm -hmm. if you don't have passion for cooking and and the restaurant trade, um, you become burnt out. Exactly. Yeah, you, that passion drives you. Mm. Um, and if you, you don't enjoy those long hours or, or, or cooking, you should really change industry. So that's the hardest thing about being a chef is, is the work involved. And any, any cook or chef will tell you that. Right. Yeah. Well, tell us a little bit about your restaurant, Red Lantern. Um, what is it like? I've, I've heard that it's won uh, quite a number of awards. Yes, it's, it's won um, Best Vietnamese Restaurant in oh. Sydney for the last, you know, six years. Awesome. Um, and has it been around for nine years? It's been around for nine years, mm -hmm. almost ten now. And it's in a, a, a converted terrace house, so it's a mm -hmm. heritage building, um, but it's a home, you know. Um, there's a, a little space where it used to be a living room and a dining room and uh, a small kitchen. Mm -hmm. We only seat 50 people. So it's not a, a big 300-seater. It's very intimate. It's warm. It's got character. Um, it's like my home. So when you come in, you instantly feel, wow, you know, you feel relaxed. And um, the service is very family orientated. You know, we, we, we really care. And we, you can really see and the ambience in there is, is very warm because we, we love showing you our cuisine. And um, it's a dining experience. Mm -hmm. yeah, so you would sit there for hours with matching wines from us all over Australia. and. Um, and education on, on, on the, the culture of where that dish came from. Right. So it's a very unique dining experience. Tell yeah. us about some of your customers. Who are they? And uh, what are the, their uh, kind of reception towards your food? Um, our customers uh, are big foodies. You know, um, they, they understand um, that um, we need to eat well. Mm -hmm. They understand that um, uh, they understand organic produce, sustainable produce. 
Um, a lot of our, our guests are very local around the area, so um, every time they come in it's like inviting a family member and a close friend back in. Um, and they, they, they want to try different cuisines, you know, they, they want to travel through the menu. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, we can offer that. And so, um, and we always offer them different dishes as well, so they can, f they can have different dishes from different regions of Vietnam. And they're so excited about what we, what we serve. It's great. Okay. The Songs of Sapa is a vibrant, visually essay of Luke's journey. The stories and recipes from each region, with stunning photographs, bursting with color and texture, capturing the beauty of Vietnam for people and their deep connection to food. Starting in the northwest of Vietnam, in the villages and hills around Sha Pa, Luke explores the roots of traditional cooking. Moving south, he travels to the capital, Hanoi, renowned for its French Vietnamese cuisine. He explores the imperial cooking of Hue, discovers the famed Cao Lo noodles in Hội An, and tastes a host of simple seafood dishes in coastal Nha Trang and Quy Nhơn. His journey, culminating in Ho Chi Minh City, where he is reunited with his family. The book has won various awards, including the 2010 Australian Publishers Awards for the Best Book Design and the Australian Food Media Awards 2010 for the Best Cookery Book by a Chef or Restaurant. Why did you name it The Songs of Sub? Um, the book has... I started my journey in Sapa mm -hmm. and I love that area. And um, I wanted to give it a title that meant something to me. Mm -hmm. um, and I was in the Sapa markets and um, I wanted it to be anytime I'm in an area yes you can visualize certain things or you can smell um, and you can touch but I love to listen to things right. as well so I sat in this bustling market I closed my eyes and I smelled all the aromas and I just listened to all the all the um, all the beautiful sounds that this Sapa market was making from um, steaming the, the, the rice noodle mm. to chopping through the, um, the whole fish onto the chopping board to the wok tossing all the, all the dishes and the vegetables from the gas um, hissing you know, out and, and the, the ice clanking, breaking the ice. Mm. So all these, all these sounds. The market um, orchestra. Yes, it was an orchestra and it was a song and it was the songs of Sapa. And when I opened my eyes, I was like, that was, oh, wow, that was incredible. And so I just quickly write that down because I just love that experience mm -hmm. of listening to the songs of Sapa. And um, there was um, such a memorable moment and I just, it was just a perfect title for the book. Exactly. In terms of in Australia, um, have you been able to travel uh, throughout Australia? To, uh, what, what do you think of the kind of the general reception of the Australian public towards Vietnamese cuisine? Ten years ago, it was very different to now. Mm. Yeah, um, when we first opened Red Lantern, um, it was very difficult to um, get people to eat goat meat. Mm. You know, it was very difficult for people to um, appreciate um, a whole fish. You know, with the tail and the head, because oh, in, in yeah, Western they're not used to it. no in Western fillet. cuisine they'll fillet and no bones and no head. Um, <laughs> And um, those kind of things, is, it's about saying, no, we use your hands to roll, mm. you know. Um, that is the best way of, of eating, is using your hands to, to feel the textures and everything else. So for, for us at the beginning, it was like, oh, no, no, can you top that head of that fish off and da, da, da. It's mm. like, no, no, this is Vietnamese cuisine. Mm. This is how we do it. This is a... Not only a dining experience, but it's a cultural experience as well. It's a very uh, yeah. exploratory experience yes, for but them. now... People are more aware of how you, you eat um, Asian cuisine or Vietnamese cuisine. Now there's no issues anymore. Mm. I don't ever get um, anyone come in and say, I can't, is that goat meat, you know, mm, that kind of thing. Yeah. So it's about, um, it's about them trying it out and, and, and learning and being aware, oh wow, this is how 
we do it in Vietnam. Mm -hmm. And so now today, uh, traveling through Australia, I do that a lot as well. I get invited to um, international food festivals right. that's held in Sydney or Melbourne and Brisbane, where chefs from all over the world are invited, uh, from France or from Italy or Lebanon, and I'm the... Um, I'm the Vietnamese guy that comes mm -hmm. in and showing and showcasing Vietnamese cuisine. So the more I do that, the more um, people are aware of how fantastic Vietnamese food mm -hmm. is. And uh, I love doing that because um, the most um, um, satisfaction, the most satisfaction I get is seeing someone try Vietnamese food for the first time and them going, wow, oh, yeah. you know, there's a party going in there, you know, all the different flavors <laughs> on my palate. And uh, that's, that's why I love doing what I do. Mm -hmm. is, is seeing that reaction on someone's face of going, oh, I've never tasted anything like this. Um, in terms of the Vietnamese dishes, so can you guys one that you are particularly fond of, that yes. you would introduce to uh, someone who is new, who doesn't know anything about yes. Vietnamese cuisine, what other dishes? I mean, say, um, say I'm a foreigner and I know nothing about Vietnamese cuisine. Yep. It's my first time to Vietnam. What would I eat? I think the, the, the other dish that um, everyone has to try as well is, um, is pho, of mm. course, yeah. Um, and I think that that broth in particular is um, <coughs> such a long process and it, it shows our, our complete dedication to, to food, you know. The broth is cooked with the bones mm. and the, um, the marrow and the, uh, you know, the, the brisket. Such intricate work. Yeah, and all the different spices involved, you know. Uh, it can range from five spices to 14 spices and it's cooked from eight hours until you know 18 hours or 24 hours if you want and the end result is this gorgeous broth with so much happening so much character um, with um, you know the slippery white noodles mm -hmm. and lots of fresh herbs and that dish is our, it's Vietnamese culture breakfast lunch or dinner you know it's fantastic exactly. yeah um, and, and um, definitely all the fresh um, rolls that mm. we do anything good is, is, is um, such a great dish to, to show people because all the vibrant herbs and, and vegetables and, and you, using it's your... It's very customized yeah, as well. Yeah. You can put in whatever you want. And you can eat as much as you want and you still feel nice, light and healthy. Exactly. Yeah. When you go to introduce Vietnamese food, um, obviously the best way to show someone is to let them taste it. Yeah. Uh, but wh how would you describe Vietnamese food to them? What are the distinctive features? Distinctive, fe distinctive features would have to be, I would say, Vietnamese food is, is fresh. It's colorful, you know, it, it, it's vibrant. Mm. Um, it's really healthy because we really think about why we're eating a dish. It doesn't only just taste good, but it, why, it's good for what? You know, it's good for your digestive system, mm -hmm. it's good for your complexion, <laughs> it's good, you know, it's good for your, your, your balancing of the hot and cold and the yin and yang, which my mother always taught me as a, mm -hmm. as a child. Right. Don't eat too much of that, it's hot. It's, it's hot. And you're like, what do you mean it's hot? It's cold, you know, but, you know, the whole learning of, um, you know, the, the cooling and the warming inside the mm -hmm. body is very important and you need to listen to your body. So in terms of that, I explain that whole philosophy of food to people who haven't tried it for the first time and um, showing them different um, herbs mm. why we eat things and they wow you know they taste it and um, understand the balance of flavor I think of yeah. um, having those five elements if it's bitter or salt or mm -hmm. spicy or, or, or sweet um, having that all on the same level is very important um, and that's Vietnamese food Exactly. Yeah. We're here at this temple to make you a very easy lotus leaf dish. I'm just going to saute and stir fry these vegetables very, very quickly. Start with my lotus seeds, carrots, fried tofu, green peas, and shiitake mushrooms. Still want them to be nice and crisp. So just a quick stir fry. I refrigerate my rice for around 24 hours just to make it nice, dry, and you can cook it easier. Two of these in there, toss it around nice and evenly. A bit of soy for colour. There you go. Not too much. Let's throw that back in. Toss that all together. And I'm going to steam this in this gorgeous lotus leaf. So you transfer the rice into your bowl of lotus leaf. And we're going to fold this six times. Five and six. And I'm going to steam it for five minutes. Carefully onto the plate. Look at that. Oh, remembering not to cut the other leaf, the under leaf. And you'll find that it's going to look like a lotus leaf now. It's forming. And there you 
have a vegetarian rice steamed in lotus leaf. Gom chai gói lá sen. So it seems that each time you come back to Vietnam, it's like you're really um, immersing yourself into a culture of food that basically connects you with other people um, yeah. and basically connects you with also uh, the, with the origins of the food, which makes the food much better. Absolutely. Um, and what it also does as well, it, um, it, it kind of shows me how, how um, lucky you know, I've, I've had it in, in Australia. And so every time I come back, I try to um, do something to to um, to improve things in Vietnam. And mm -hmm. so you know, if it's um, I've recently set up a foundation called the Little Lantern Foundation, mm -hmm. and basically we raise money in Australia to um, implement um, training in Vietnam for uh, disadvantaged youths. Mm -hmm. So I'm working with um, a group at the moment in Central Vietnam called Reach, and it's a vocational school. Um, for these children, these kids from for, 16. For uh, hospitality training, Hospitality, right? yes. Mm -hmm. So there's um, front of house, so F&B training. Um, there's hotel operations. Right. Um, we're going to implement commercial cookery as mm -hmm. well. Um, English and skills training. So for me, um, that's my biggest passion at the moment, is to, um, to spend more time in Vietnam and, um, and work with REACH to, to do this for, for, the, um, for the, the kids who need it here. Yeah, great, which exactly. is really, really important for me. It's great. You're not yeah. only coming to learn about the culture, the food, um, and bringing it to the, out, the, the international public, yeah. but also coming back here and giving back as well. Yes, and that's really important. And, um, you know, Viet Vietnam tourism is a huge industry. Uh, people love coming here. Um, so we need to um, be able to give some great service in Vietnam, you know, great, fantastic hotels and restaurants. Let's, let's give them something to remember, you know. So mm -hmm. um, um, we're working towards that in the next year or so and um, making that program progress further. Do you plan to kind of uh, open up uh, or spread that model out to other regions of Vietnam? Yeah, absolutely. Um, and, and, you know, why I'm working with um, this great organization called REACH, it's a local organization and they, they take, um, uh, they've, they graduate a thousand kids a year and um, they put them through this training program and every 80% of these kids that finish this program gets a job in a restaurant or hotel wow. it's fantastic and great they teach uh, it's a great model and they um, there's um, graphic design you know there's um, English mm -hmm. there's skills vocational training and uh, for me I want to um, help progress that program and um, bring trainee trainers from Australia and and teach cooking and hygiene and and that would in turn um, give our tourism Vietnam tourism ministry a great boost of service um, and so this program we want to implement um, soon in, in Ho Chi Minh City mm -hmm. um, by 2011. It's already in Da Nang, it's already in Hue and Hanoi, and we're just going to keep growing and keep growing. And um, a thousand kids, students a year, getting great jobs, it's fantastic. It's a great goal. Yes. Now tell us a little bit about your future plans. What's next after this uh, season? Um, after the season, um, I'm going to be spending a lot of time in central Vietnam working with REACH mm. and also um, building an education center in uh, central Vietnam about conservation and environmental issues mm -hmm. um, and also um, protection of, of um, our great wild animals that Vietnam has. So I plan to set up um, an eco lodge in uh, in the Da Nang area okay. where um, we'll use all solar power so conserve energy and this is all the things I've learned from Australia you mm -hmm. know to appreciate these things um, uh, use all sustainable produce mm. organic um, um, recycled materials and just just create awareness um, in Vietnam about um, the environment and how we can can build this country to make it so much greener mm. um, and if we do that and think of the future, more people would enjoy Vietnam and more people will come back. Exactly. Yeah. On behalf of Talk Vietnam, we wish you all the best of luck in your future endeavors. We hope that Thank you'll you. continue your passion um, and continue to bring Vietnamese cuisine to the world. So bringing uh, more ideas to Vietnam as well. Awesome. Thank you very much for having me. Thank you very Thank you. much. We just talked with Luke Nguyen and learned more about uh, his 
culinary adventures in Vietnam, his uh, embarkment on different journeys uh, to explore more about Vietnam and also to introduce Vietnam to the world. Thank you very much. This is Talk Vietnam. We'll talk more next time. Thank you.